Hi, and welcome to Power Views. I'm Dan McDade, your host and president of Point Clear. My guest today is Cal Porter. Cal is a Georgia Tech graduate and the CEO of SalesLoft, a sales information automation platform. SalesLoft delivers sales triggers to over 6,000 professionals every day, including me. And David Cummings, the founder of Pardot, an Atlanta-area serial entrepreneur, states, and I'll quote, Sales Loft provides one of the best solutions to the challenges most sales reps face today. It's a critical tool for shortening sales cycles and increasing deal volume. Kyle, welcome to Power Views. Glad to be here, Dan. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thanks for taking time on this beautiful afternoon. Um, first, I got to ask you because I think I saw this on your LinkedIn profile. So, tell us about being a tangerine farmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice, uh, nice catch there. Well, I I'll tell you. If you would have told me that I would have owned five acres of tangerines, uh, you know, five, ten years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. But I married this uh, very special woman from Central Florida, and her family's in the citrus business. And it's been her dream to be a, a tangerine farmer, so uh, just like her uh, grandparents. And so we bought our first farm. We've got five acres of tangerines down in Central Florida and a little house on the lake. And I uh, like to go back and forth between here and Atlanta and spend some time down there. But I'll, I'll be sure to bring you some tangerines once... Uh, this season's crops mature. Hey, I really appreciate <laughs> that, and I know that. Um, are you still commuting back and forth? I think you told me one time you took the bus because it had a uh, Wi-Fi, and then you could work all the way back and forth, right? Uh, yeah, I stopped doing the bus. I'm, I'm, I'm more of an AirTran guy now, kind of moving over to Delta. But yeah, we do. Um, I'll do a week in Atlanta, and then a, a long weekend in Florida, and then she'll do the opposite. So. Ah. Uh, we end up spending about 70% of our time together, and it's fun, and we enjoy it. Well, you know, you just triggered something that um, I, I read, and that is you felt like social media helped you as a person, as a husband, um, in your faith, and a number of other things. You know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, social media to me is not just, uh, you know, apps and, and, you know, websites. It's communicating with the people that you care about, mm -hmm. and it's finding the people that are important to you, and sharing messages, and inspiring, and connecting, and so... Yeah, you know, social media to me is just another way of, of opening up to the world and, and uh, you know, connecting with the people that, that matter to you. So kind of my broad uh, sentiments on social. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You know, I know that um, you do a lot of writing, and um, I printed out an article that I thought was really interesting, cause, particularly because it had such a great title. But the title of the article is Inbound Leads Suck and Cold Calling is Dead. And I wondered uh, what, what caused you to want to write that article, kind of what the purpose was, and any feedback you've received about it. Yeah, so um, it, it's kind of one of those, it's almost kind of like a manifesto. I, uh, I read a ton of stuff on the web, and you know, I follow everything that you do, and uh, you, you know, really look up to you as a thought leader. And uh, you know, I'm really in, invested in, in the sales world, and I wake up every day with how do we help sales and marketing folks. And uh, so there's a lot of people that are writing, hey, cold calling's dead. A lot of people that are writing, inbound is not the way. And, and I just kept reading all these articles and I said, you know, neither one of these are 100% true. You know, they're all true to some extent and they're all false to some extent. So the, the title is a little tongue in cheek or maybe a little link baby. Uh, but the whole point is that, um, you know, you can build an outbound, uh, an outbound system if you, and, and use great content. Or you can build a great inbound system and use great outreach. And so, uh, you know, when we started SalesLoft in late 2011, I started blogging every day. But I didn't just blog and leave it out there. I'd email and call people and say, hey, I want to connect with you and show you this piece of content I put together. And so I was basically using Outbound to build my inbound. Yeah, and yeah. I think they really, uh, I really, I think they feed off each other. And, you know, I've got, I've seen sales teams that are making cold calls. And one of the best things they can do is understand a situation the customer's in and deliver them some content. And so I think that the two are, are not, uh, there's no one um, silver bullet in sales. There's no magic pill. And and I think uh, a company should do everything they can to move the needle. And I use the term "all bound." Uh, Which, not by the way, is not outbound, by the way, I think bound. I think I actually came up with that. But I'm going to go ahead and let your article stand. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I heard it was from a guy named Alan Nance, yeah, who yeah. Uh, runs a company called What Counts in Town. Yep, yep. And uh, heard it and loved it. And uh, so I have been uh, definitely repeating it. But I'll give you credit as well in, in our yeah. future posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm a proponent, just like you are, of the all bound approach. Um, and I was wondering, you know, if you were coaching a sales rep today and you they wanted to become more social or you wanted them to become more social, what are some of the first steps that you would recommend? You know, what would you want to see happen over the, say, first three-month period? All right, how much time do I have? <laughs> as long as you want. <laughs> so um, I'll make it quick. The first thing is I say build out your LinkedIn profile. 
uh, build it out from the perspective of how you solve the problems and challenges that your customers face. Uh, it's not just a resume, it's how you present yourself to your customer audience. Uh, second thing I do is go into your CRM or your database and find the people that matter the most to you. Uh, oftentimes this is executives at open opportunities. So what we do is we say, okay, what are all our, who, what are all our open opportunities? Take all those executives and see if they have Twitter accounts. And if they do, we follow them we put them on a list that says VIPs or certain opportunities. And then we use tools that will deliver us emails every morning and say, here's the things that just your VIPs have tweeted. Not your whole 400 people that you follow, but just those folks that are in opportunities. Uh, so I'd say do that, and then I'd say get out and share stuff. You know, make contributions, connect with people, think about it from the perspective of how can you serve your community, how can you solve problems, and think about it from that perspective first before expecting a return. Um, and then other things you can do when you see other people make comments, share them, star them, retweet them, uh, you know, connect them with other people that, that you know, see and think of things the same way, and really just build your own you know, almost like service uh, capabilities to the people you care the most about using social media. I know that, um, you know, I basically keep LinkedIn open all day, um, and I feel like I'm just, you know, constantly going back and forth, back and forth. But And, and I, I also feel like I could spend eight hours a day um, tweeting and writing and, and being social. You know, do you is there do you feel like there's a budget or a guideline for you know somebody to how much time should they spend doing this every day? Yeah. So what we recommend is don't always be on. And and I want to describe that. If I had a whiteboard, I would show you a graph, <laughs> and it would say when I, the way I do social is I start my morning no social, no social, and then I'm going to look at all the things that have happened in just a 15 minute period. So it's like spike of social, right? But then it's back to the regular day and the routine of the other things that I've done. And so um, I, I recommend that you put a certain number of spikes in your day. And depending upon your buyer, if you have a, a super social buyer audience, you may be there more frequently. But if you don't have one that's as much, then you're there less frequently. Uh, so a lot of the things that we recommend is get systems to condense what's happening and deliver it to you through email. So you just open it up in the morning, say, okay, here's the things that are happening. I'm gonna act, 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 and then move on. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the idea. But um, you know, if your company if your company sells to people who use Facebook, then you should be on Facebook a lot. You know, if you sell Facebook solutions, you should be on Facebook a lot. Right. But uh, you know, if you sell uh, if you sell waste bin containers, you probably shouldn't be on there that frequently. <laughs> uh, and but maybe you can still get that little piece of information every other day or you know once a week. So. Yeah. That's kind of my philosophies there. As um, you know, it's hard hard for me to believe that uh, here we are in October of 2013, looking at 2014, which it seems like yesterday it was 2012. But so, what do you expect to happen? You know, that's different in marketing and sales as you look out through the next year. Yeah, so I think we're seeing this. Um, we're, I think we're seeing two things, and we're seeing a lot of things. But the things that I'm paying a lot of attention to are personalization. Um, you know, understanding the buyer. And uh, it's really like uh, business technology follows behind consumer technology. So in the consumer world, we used to turn on the radio in our cars and hope they played our favorite music, right? We could buy a CD and play it, but that's not as you know scalable and doesn't go everywhere. But now when I turn on Pandora, Pandora knows who I am. It knows my interests and it caters to me. And I think we're seeing that a lot now in the business world of sales is understanding your buyer, understanding the things that motivate them, that move them, understand where they are, how they like to be communicated to. And I think this is kind of the era of personalization in sales. Um, the second thing that I like is, um, I, I don't know the best way to describe it. I, I originally thought of it as colloquial, colloquialism, uh, but it's really transparency. And businesses have a lot of opportunities and options for who they work with. Uh, but what I'm finding, the companies that I like to do business with are the ones that are really, really, really transparent. You can see why they do the things they do. You can see when they make mistakes. You can see how they operate. And so I think we're in this era of transparency where companies owe it to their customers to be upfront, to be honest, to be real and true, and not just this corporate sheet which uh, you know has a bunch of people in suits and ties behind it uh, you know, just following a, a rule list. And so I love this kind of era of transparency and this era of personalization. One of the things I like about Sales Loft, and I'll ask you to talk a little bit about Sales Loft in a minute, but one of the things I really like is, to me, it is a one-to-one -one solution. And one of the kind of the things I feel is happening, and in fact, I read an article about the changes that are going on in Google and, 
you know, how you, you would use um, IP addresses to kind of deliver content to different companies, you know, based on their size or their vertical or whatever. And while I think that's pretty cool, I think that a lot of people are basically getting the sense that, you know, we went, we were, at one time we were one to many, and then we theoretically spent a little bit of time at one to one, and now it seems to me we're kind of going back to one to many, because even if you use personal novelization, most people know that it's basically just, you know, it's not really personal, it's just something that they've mass produced to make it look like it's personal. How, how do you, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree. You know, I think what, what we're trying to do, SalesLoft does two things. One, it helps you build lists of prospects to run outreach or outbound campaigns to, either email or phone. And then two, it provides intelligence once you've established the companies and people that you care about. So it provides news alerts. It tells you when people change from job to job. It's a feed or like a newspaper for your customers, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing here is, is that I could have 40 customers, and I care immensely about all of them. And I'm going to go one-to-one -one with them as we're talking about here, but I'm not going to wake up every morning and Google them every morning just to make sure something happened to them, right? Because that's a little bit too tedious for me, right? So why don't the robots do that for me and deliver me the report? So I wake up in the morning and say, okay, I got 40 customers. What happened to them? Oh, this happened. Now I'm going to reach out to them, right? And so that's what we think is that you know, salespeople, in order to do their job, in order to do a really, really, really good job one-to-one, -one, it takes a lot of work. And so we want to take out all that, you know, kind of routine, boring work and let the robots do that and then deliver you the condensed information so that you can act on it, be more creative, and engage with your customers in new ways. So taking out the <laughs> tedious task and making and giving them more time to do the cool stuff. Yeah, and I can give you two examples of that. As a matter of fact, it's the same contact. I, I, I got something from you and it caused me to realize that, gosh, it's been six months since I've even talked to this guy even via email and he used to be a client. So I'm going to, you know, send up something, and sure enough, I send it up. Next thing I know, I got a referral from him, you know, that turned into a piece of business for us. Well, recently, uh, you guys reported that he had been promoted, so I reached out to him, and I said, hey, congratulations, it sounds like things are really going great for you. And he says, yes, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you reached out, because they're going so well that it looks like we, we may be able to talk about using your services. They went from being a relatively small company to a larger company. So those That's are two awesome. two really good examples of, you know, why I... Um, it's funny because my phone doesn't download at all, and I usually am so quick to delete stuff because I don't want to have email stacked up, but I never delete yours. <laughs> I always Thank make sure I go. Much. I always make sure I go to um, to the to, to the site on my laptop, and you know, really really take time working on it. So, um, Kyle, for the for our audience, if they have some more questions about Sales Loft or want to reach out to you, what's the best way to to get a hold of you? Yeah, so you can find me all over the web, yeah. um, or you could you could just go to salesloft.com and sign up for our free product, and we have two free offerings. One is the one that you're using that you mentioned, which is uh, tells you when people in your network change jobs and delivers this real simple report on a daily basis, and the other is what we call our prospector application, and this allows you to take targeted, segmented lists of people that you care about and export them to spreadsheets and to CRM so you can run campaigns across them. So what we've found is that LinkedIn is the best source of sales data on the internet. Right. And uh, you know we've used other services, but LinkedIn is the best. And so SalesLoft has built what we believe to be the most respectable and the simplest way to help take some of that data and put it into your systems and into your processes to make your life easier. Well, good. Okay, so salesloft.com. Thanks again for taking time to join me today. I really appreciate it. Great to talk to you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, great. For now, it's Dan McDade signing off from another edition of Power Views. Thank you for watching. Thank you.